live from Greenville, South Carolina. Welcome to ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball. Tonight for Bon Secours Wellness Arena in downtown Greenville is the Furman Paladins and the Winthrop Eagles. Furman returning to its roots playing in downtown for the first of three games this season along with Bryant Lambert. I'm Dan Scott, welcoming you to our broadcast. Paladins at nine and three, final uh, non-conference game of this season. Uh, everything else is conference play. Yeah, Coach Ritchie's squad, a lot of success in the non-conference play. St. Mary's was defeated by this Winthrop squad. Winthrop's looking for some consistency and they'll need all 40 minutes tonight. Well, they have won the last five games between these two teams, Winthrop has. Let's take a look at our players to watch. Beginning with the uh, Eagles, Chandler Vaudrin, not your typical point yeah, guard. Not your typical point guard. Over six assists a game. That's leading the Big South, 15th in the nation, Dan, but he has over 500 career rebounds. So not your typical point guard because he likes to crash the glass, bigger in stature, and he's going to attack the paint. And for the Paladins coming off the bench, Mike Bothwell. Bothwell dynamic off the bench. He likes to attack down low, has a game-winning three-point play earlier this season, coming off a career high last time out. So that's the setup. It's Furman, it's Winthrop, it's Bon Secours Wellness Arena. We're jacked up, we hope you are too. Tip off is next. Something brought us here to a time and a place where your decisions can actually drive change. Where extra achievers become ultra curricular. Where a private institution serves a greater public mission. At Furman University, opportunity is all around you. So take our commitment, combine it with everything you're capable of, and the world will be forced to take notes. There you see a above our head shot of the playing floor here at Bon Secours Wellness Arena as we welcome you back. Just about time to get this one underway. Our coaches, we start with Pat Kelsey of Winthrop. He's in his eighth season, Bryant. Yeah, over 140 career wins. And Dan, he almost left the Eagles a couple times and stayed there and he's built a winner in Rock Hill. Don't adjust your sets. The lights have gone out for a reason here as they get set to introduce Furman starting lineup after the hype video plays. Paladins are coached by third year uh, mentor Bob Ritchie. He has been around Furman for a long, long time and uh, got the opportunity when Nico Medved moved on three seasons ago and it's been nothing but success. Yeah, building on that initial success from coach Nico Medved, looking to take Furman higher and further than they've ever been, Dan. Last time they played downtown through the mid 90s, from the early 1900s, they went to six NCAA tournaments, six SOCON titles. Coach Richie trying to get the Paladins back to that plateau. And as we go through the broadcast this evening, we're going to kind of walk through a little bit of that history and show you some things that we hope you're going to find as interesting as we do. There's the the uh, look at head coach Bob Richie. But uh, it's a Furman team that's nine and three in the uh, non-conference portion of the schedule. This is the last non-conference game open up SOCON play on the road uh, against Mercer on December 20th and then a rare New Year's Day game at VMI. Yeah, two road games to start the SOCON schedule for the Paladins, but tonight, first things first, playing a Winthrop team, Dan, you mentioned has won the last five matchups between these two teams. They played 10 times all the time. Seven of those 10 matchups decided by seven points or less, so a very competitive series. Winthrop four and six. Uh, they, of course, in the Big South, they have also yet to play a conference game. And uh, Pat Kelsey coming off a 18 win season a year ago. He had the unenviable task, Brian, of taking over this program after the incredible run that Greg Marshall had. Marshall, of course, went on to Wichita State, who Furman saw in the NIT game at Timmins Arena on campus back in March. But uh, overall, Pat Kelsey's done a pretty good job with this program. A very good job, and we mentioned it's been loyal, stayed in Rock Hill. Uh, it's a tough place to play in a, in a competitive Big South League. They're looking for some consistency this year, Dan. We mentioned they won over St. Mary's. They had Duke on the rope. That was a ball game late in the second half. Played ETSU tough up in Johnson City. Lost some games. You're thinking, maybe, maybe how did that happen? So I think 40 minutes of consistency is the name of the game for the Eagles tonight if they want to have a chance to knock off this Furman squad. Well, they are going to feature a uh, young man who transferred in 
from the University of Tennessee in the middle of their lineup, D.J. Burns, a 6'9", 260-pound redshirt freshman from right there in Rock Hill, and, and he is a big body presence inside. It'll be intriguing to see how that works really on both ends of the floor, how Furman handles him offensively, and if Furman's able to play the tempo they want, can Burns keep up? Yeah, and you think Gurley and Slauson and Mounts may have a tag team duo of defending that big fella down low, but as you mentioned, Dan, for everything Furman has to defend, the Eagles got to do it on the other end, and all those three that I mentioned can step outside and shoot the three and probably try to take them off the dribble and mismatch the other side of the court. One thing to watch, how far into the game will we get before Bob Ritchie unveils that 1-3-1 defense yeah. that has been so successful here in the uh, non-conference portion of the season. He never run his own defense before. He was a strict man-to-man -man guy, but his assistant coaches said, hey, coach, let's take a look at this. It's not a passive zone defense, and boy, has it been effective. Yeah, Coach Ritchie likes aggressiveness. He didn't think it could be done in the zone. You mentioned that he was convinced, and Dan has forced a lot of turnovers and a lot of run-out points. I think Furman's going to go to it maybe in the first six, seven minutes when the opportunity presents itself. Noah Gurley and DJ Burns to jump it off. The tip is controlled by the Paladins in the home whites. And we are underway here at Bon Secours Wellness Arena, also known as simply the Well. Noah Gurley, double then triple team. Slauson cutting to the basket and he's fouled and will head to the line for two. And they get the foul on Josh Ferguson. He is a very talented young man, a senior from Miami, leads them in scoring and second in rebounds. But immediately you see Coach Kelsey's strategy of making Gurley work through two or three defenders down low. A nice job by Slauson cutting through the basket, drew the foul and made the first at the line. If Gurley, as he progresses, the Matt Rafferty time to be able to kick it out. Of course, Furman's dynamic senior that graduated a year ago. He's gonna be tougher and tougher to defend. That's good news for Jalen Slauson as he knocks down both free throws. Slauson, a player that Firm is looking to get going. Explosive early in the season, been in a little bit of a rut. No better time to get out of it than tonight. Go down low to the big fella. Slauson draws the initial move on him and the team Jerome Hall says, hey, he took one too many steps. Jerome Hall, Michael Husted, Ryan Christian, our officiating crew here this evening. And you saw Slauson running back down the court, a little bit of swagger. It's amazing what offense can do to defensively and vice versa, and the Eagles come out immediately full court pressure. And then they back off of it, just showing a little token pressure. And Chandler Baldwin, our player to watch, not in the starting lineup. And uh, Bob Ritchie noticed as we were recording the pregame radio interview that he had a nice backcourt look and Slauson with the payoff jam. But Baldwin looked like he had a heavy tape on his ankle, so we don't know if he's injured or not, but there's a response by Hunter Hell, a deep three right wing. Yeah, nice answer there. Uh, Furman had passed out of the double team. The cut into this early 4-0 pallet and lean is going to be interesting if the Eagles are going to keep that double team coming. They're going to have to be careful of the help side defender. Gurley with a high arching three that finds the bottom. Noah Gurley coming in. He can knock it down from long range at over... 52% on the year from the free throw line. Tough drive, shot comes off. Gurley the rebound, Hunter pushing. Gurley into the paint, goes into the land of the trees and has it taken away. Here comes Hale, he'll pull up in transition, yes. Back to back from long range for Hale and he's been the offense so far for the Eagles. 7-6 Furman. We are off to a hot start here at the well in downtown Greenville. Well, one of the things we wanted to see is do either of these teams have an effect on shooting? It's a bigger arena than they're used to playing in so far. Doesn't look to be a problem either way. Mounts has his pocket picked. Here comes Hale. One on one with Lyons. Slauson gets back late with the help. Blocks it off the backboard. And Furman looking to run. Winthrop a good job of getting back. Mounts out of the corner for three. Yes. Play Mounts knocks it down. Furman now. A perfect two of two from behind the arc, and the lead's back at four. Hale wanted to launch that one deep. Here's another takeaway as they tried to go inside to Burns, and then Mounts throws it away off the back of Hale. Slauson 
jumped that route. The ball hit off of Jerome Hall, and then Slauson touched it, stepping out of bounds. Yeah, active hands for the Paladins early. Coach Ritchie wants to see 30 deflections a game defensively, and so far blocking. We're going to see Valdrin come in right now. Valdrin is coming in as well as Charles Falden. And Chase Claxton. Let's see the Eagles with a sense of calmness when Valdrin has the basketball. Hale elbow jumper, yes, he has all eight of their points. And only averages just over eight and a half yeah. a season, uh, a game this season. A hot start. Some players thrive in this kind of environment. Hale looks to be one. Furman on top, 10 to 8. Mounts will put it on the floor. Turn around, spin, and almost stuck it between the backboard and the rim. You see the Eagles want to go quick. Furman has faced teams that have had success getting the ball out and going misses down. The Eagles looking to push. Hell with the pass, gets it right back, and kicks it back out to Ferguson. Baldwin. He'll get it back. Gurley got a hand on it. Six to shoot. Hale dribble penetration left it short. Gurley made him change that shot and Mounts cleared the rebound. Nice job by Furman there, scrambling defensively. Went for a couple steals. The help side came and forced the miss. Slauson had it taken away. Baldwin across midcourt, working against Alex Hunter. Gonna try to back Hunter down and kick it back to Hale. Open again. And he finally missed one from out there. Right on line, just a bit short there. At the two point pallet and lead. Dan, next whistle will be the under 16 media timeout. Lions dials long distance. Yes, sir. Paladin's perfect still from long range. Three to three. Coach Ritchie in the two practices here said Furman shot the ball really well from above the arc and right there on the wings. Backside help came late, and Charles Falden. Thir 13 to 10, Hunter. Slauson at the high post. Immediately seen with it there, looking to hedge on those screens, doesn't want the Paladins to turn the corner. Lions a ball fake, the kick, the mounts, another three, that one's short. Slauson kept it alive, Gurley, and now Hunter from deep, and couldn't get the roll. And another offensive rebound, this time it's mounts going back to the basket. And a foul on Claxton. That'll be his first. Team second. And Mounts will be shooting free throws when we come back. Good start for both teams. It's Furman at 13 to 10. Thirteen ten, Furman out early at the first media timeout. These teams have played ten times. The series split right down the middle, but uh, 
Winthrop has won the last five. Furman hasn't won a game in this series, Bryant, since 1988, and that was played across the street at the old Memorial Auditorium. Yeah, we mentioned seven of these 10 games in the series, seven points or less. The last time they played, a little bit of a surprise, a 19-point win for the Eagles inside Timmins Arena. Dan, it was the year before that, in Rock Hill, a last-second kind of prayer three-pointer went, and that propelled Winthrop for two of those five wins we talked about. Haven't played since 2017 as Mounts misfires on the first free throw. That was a 93-74 win for the Eagles at Timmins Arena. Well, we've got a moment. Want to say hello to a dear friend of mine who just sent me a note. He's tuning in. Tom Reginas is the baseball coach at Winthrop, but I had the pleasure of working with him for a number of years at Clemson when I was there. TR's good people, his son Ben Paulson, spent some time in the big leagues yeah. in Colorado. There you go. Of course, anything with you in baseball, you know to have a keen interest there. Everything else is just biding time until baseball season, my friend. Claxton misses. Trey Clark, who just checked in, clears the board. Like Trey Clark, a lockdown defender for Coach Bob Rich. Mounts will try one from the corner, left it short, got his own rebound, finds an open hunter straight away. That one's in and out, no good. And Baldwin runs down the loose ball rebound. Already four offensive rebounds for the Palin. It's only one second chance point, though, on those opportunities. The Palin is crashing the boards. Fifteen on the shot clock, and there's a check foul on Alex Hunter, that'll be his first and team number one. See Jalen Pugh, Dan, checking in for the Palin. Let's talk about someone that's earned his playing time. Coach Bob Ritchie has said as he's evolved, he's studying a scout, he's learning his defensive assignments. We all know what he can do on the offensive end. Interesting that he's coming here now, no more than six minutes into this first half. And bounce pass lobbed into Valdron. This is Falden, nice backdoor pass. The cut, the basket, and the foul is Chase Claxton. He's a Greenville native, getting a chance to play downtown in his hometown. Claxton will go to the line where he's just 51% on the season. It's gotta be a cool moment for him coming back, not only to play your hometown team, but to get to do it right in the middle of downtown. Hit the free throw. Averages six a game, he's got three. And Furman's lead at one, 14-13. No, Clark at the top. He'll drive all the way to the rim, missed. Got a hand on the rebound, but controlled by Keith. Got it to Baldwin, gets it right back. And he took the pass, standing on the sideline in front of the Furman bench, turnover. And third turnover for the Eagles. And whether it's off a firm and miss, even a make, uh, they want to get out and run, trying to test the pound as all hey, defense. Hey, as you hey, see, Smalls hey. and the Lions back in oh, firm and girly hey. and mounts will hey, take hey, a seat. So far, Furman doing a pretty good job staying out of foul trouble. Hey. Sometimes when you're guarding a bigger Buckeye. defender in DJ Buckeye. Burns or Buckeye. offensive player DJ Burns, the tendency is to maybe try to cheat and come up with some early fouls. And so far, Pound is doing a nice job of defending down low without fouling, holding Burns scoreless in the first four. Botwell, and now Pew. Slauson backing and spinning. Good defense by Winthrop. They're being very, very aggressive in that man-to-man. -man. Eight seconds. Botwell with four. Botwell, backdoor pass, Clark. Oh! Just ahead. On the shot clock buzzer, the reverse jam. Hello, Trey Clark, and now we're gonna have an offensive foul down low on Burns fighting for position. Dan, feel this energy at the crowd right now. Talk to Bob Ritchie about just this on the radio pregame show. The fact that they've developed such a great home court now at Timmins Arena and the energy that flows in that building. But he said, you know what? We can have energy here too and we're feeling it right now. Trey Clark absolutely electrifying the cloud. The double team came down low. Clark went to the basket and movement paid off for the big fella to throw it down on the other side of the rim. 16-13, Furman by three. 
Slauson backing Burns down, goes up with the baby hook, too strong, and knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Paladins, and they'll reset the shot clock to 20. These aren't clean offensive rebounds Firm is getting. They're keeping it alive, tipping it, keeping the ball active, and so far it's paying off in extra possessions. 12.38 to go in the first half. Lions working against Hale, taking him into the paint, off the glass and scores. He's more than just a three-point shooter. Nice patience by the lone Palin and senior and Furman up five. Trying to go inside, Slauson got in front of Burns, took it away. Active hands, Lions will try one from way downtown, no. Right on line, just a bit too strong. Funny how short shots lead to long shots. Hale again. In transition, Bothwell clears the board. Only well, Hale hasn't met a shot that he doesn't like yet, has he? He likes to get them up, and when they're going down often, you gotta imagine they'll keep going. There's a guy who likes to shoot it, but he misfires that time, Jalen Pugh. Jalen Pugh. 65% from long range coming in. It's open three, and Josh Ferguson doesn't miss it. This Winthrop team, as a whole, 32% from long range. They're three of five here in the early going. And it's back to a two-point pal in the lead. We got a line change coming up next whistle. Media timeout also at the next whistle as we're at the 11 and a half minute mark. Here's Lions for three, count it, and he'll go to the line for one more. Toledo. Here's another look at it as we get set to head out to break. 21-16 Paladins. Lions with a chance for a four-point play when we come back. In 2016, these teams met at Winthrop, coming down the wire, and watch this desperation three by Anders Broman that gave Winthrop the victory. Stephen Kroon would get a shot off just across midcourt that hit the rim, but that was the fourth in what has been five consecutive wins in this series. And, and Furman defensively did exactly what I think the staff wanted to yes. do there. Cut out the first couple options. Broman threw it up there and put in a little bit of a prayer, but you're right, that kept this Eagle winning streak alive. Lions trying to complete a four point play as we get back to action here, and he does. He's got nine. That's Furman's largest lead, and Dan, you said when's the 1-3-1 coming? The answer's at the 11:25 mark of the first half. Gurley got his hand on a ball. Soon to get the top directing traffic. You see the Eagles haven't gotten a good look at the basket. It's still 13 on the shot clock. It's going to take a couple possessions to see this long athletic Furman 1-3-1. One, one. Zunick nearly traveled, falls down as he makes the pass. And that three by Falden is good. Penetrate and kick. And Falden was able to connect. Yeah, just 4-31 from long range on the years. Falden. So Furman will probably give up that shot 
nine times out of 10, they're credit the Eagles making firm and pet. 22-19. Furman's lead at three, mounts. And now Gurley with eight on the shot clock. And it's called for a double dribble. That's too bad call. Bob Ritchie did not like that call by Michael Houston and letting him know it from about mid-court all the way down to the baseline. Yeah, we'll see if we can't get another look. Coach Ritchie didn't think Gurley dribbled the first time before he got called for that double dribble. That's the Paladins' fifth turnover. And the ball will go back over to Winthrop as the Paladins. And it looked like it fell back to a man-to-man -man after that brief 1-3-1. One, one. Turnover's even at five. Here's King. Cutting to the basket, had it taken away again. And there's Lyons defending. He's more than just a three-point shooter. And he's going to fire one, but have it blocked by King. And Baldwin plucks it out of the air. Ferguson in the corner. Active Furman hands, getting a lot of deflections. Not necessarily leading to turnovers yet, Dan, but something to watch. Another three. This one's short from Falden. Gurley with the board. Already the fourth rebound for Noah Gurley. Mounts will try from the corner again. That one too long. Bob Ritchie said in their shoot around on Thursday that they shot the ball well from everywhere except the corners. And, and I, the reason I bring it up is because if you look at some of maybe some of the camera angles from the end zones, you see there's an incredible amount of room behind each basket, and so sometimes that can cause depth perception problems. They didn't have those issues. This is where they call the double dribble on Gurley, and, and I think they might have said when he was gaining possession, he might have had a dribble to initially gain possession. That had to be what it was there. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, another deflection. Winthrop maintains possession. Ferguson, a tough finish. And he'll go to the line for one. We got to watch this between Jalen Slauson and Burns. They're mouthing at each other a bit down low. Look for that little game within the game as the official comes over and talks with them both. Slauson, nice job keeping it alive, but the Eagles pick up a loose ball and a chance to tie things up at 22. Look at this. You'll see it bounce right off. Winthrop Slauson going over the line, saves it right into Ferguson. He completes the three-point play. And that's a little 6-0 run. We're tied at 22. Man, what a high-quality mid-major basketball game we have here in downtown Greenville. Great basketball, great atmosphere, great programs. I feel great. How about you? <laughs> Watch out, Gurley wide open. Trying to back down. Ferguson really botting him up. He'll go up with a little jump hook. No, Slauson coming over the top, and he'll get called for the foul. There you saw the double team came, maybe the triple team as Slauson's whistled for his second personal foul. Fifth team foul. Nine oh four to go. In the first half, we're tied at 22 here at Bon Secours Wellness Arena. Mounts has the duty of guarding Burns on the block, trying to deny the entry pass. Burns has it on the baseline. Feeds a cutting Ferguson, who beat Gurley and slammed it home. And I think Gurley is looking at his finger, Dan, and it's been dislocated a bit as he's holding it out. You can see it there. I think they'll get Justin Games off the bench as they'll have to take a look, closer look at Noah Gurley. He went up for that block as the Eagles have taken their largest and first lead here at 24-22. Oh. If you have a queasy stomach, don't look at that finger. Yeah, he's going back into the tunnel, as you see there. We'll see if they can get it taped up. He's back in action, but then he called it. I don't think there's a question of what the problem is right now with Noah Gurley. Mm -hmm. Now, interesting lineup choice, right? You put in Jalen Pugh, Furman trying to go a little smaller. All five outside the perimeter mounts the tallest one on the court now for the Paladins at 6 7. Furman had a 22 16 lead not all that long ago, but it's been an 8 0 run by Winthrop to 
take their lead at 24-22. Yeah. All happening and over the last 219, the Palin is nearly three minutes without a bucket. Clark at the top, few. Nine seconds, Bothwell. A lot of traffic in that lane, had to force the shot up. And out of bounds, last touch by who? By Furman. The Eagle basketball, Bothwell late in the shot clock, trying to make something happen. It was a attacking play that he got the and one against UT Arlington in the closing seconds to give Furman a one point victory. Bothwell being more and more aggressive. Gurley coming back out with Justin Gaines. We'll keep an eye on that. Burns down inside to Ferguson. And a travel. Got knocked off balance. And we're gonna go to break. Exactly eight minutes to go here in the first half. Furman trailing it by two. 24-22, back to the well in a moment. Along with Bryant Lambert, Dan Scott, back with you at Bon Secours Wellness Arena downtown. Uh, you want to look at what happened to Noah Gurley, do so at your own risk, although he just checked back into the game, which is good news for the Paladins. Yeah, he was going for the block and hit the rim at then the backboard. And don't look close, as you mentioned, if you had an easy, queasy stomach. It was bent backwards, dislocated. The good news is, is for the Paladins, he's checking back in. You see those fingers taped down. The question may be more mental than physical. Can you trust those two hands and does it affect your shooting motion? Cause it is his right hand that has the middle and pointer finger taped together. Furman after starting off shooting all hot, now down to just 35%, but forces it down low and ties things up. And Bothwell in traffic banks at home, his first basket tied at 24. Ferguson, big mismatch against Pew, but kicks it back outside. And that ball deflected out of bounds. Yeah, I think they're going to say then last touch by Winthrop. It was definitely touched by the Paladins. I don't know if the officials missed that or if they say the Eagles touched it. Yeah, no question. I'll see if we can't get another look. It, Furman. Watch it, watching it live, yeah, that, I thought it should be Winthrop basketball. Yeah, unless the Eagles touched it in the corner going out of bounds, that's another deflection that Coach Bob Ritchie likes to see. Here is Bothwell kicking the mounts. Jump stop, barely draws iron with the right-handed hook. Baldwin in the front court. You see again off the Furman miss. The Eagles wanted to go quick. Furman, nice job getting back in transition. Here's Baldwin trying to use his size. Goes up over Bothwell and scores. First basket for Chandler Baldwin. Eight and a half points, five and a half rebounds, six and a half assists per game. Mounts heading to the line for two. Mounts to go to the line where he is one of two tonight on the season. Mounts just 60% from the charity stripe, but 
Take another look as Mounts kind of called his defender slowing down a bit. He charged toward the basket, a nice entry pass, and the push from behind, that was Bothwell. And the foul going against Anumba. And you mentioned this crowd and the atmosphere in Timmins Arena. And this configuration sits about 9,000. We don't have that many down here, but it'll be a very respectable number as these weekends at the well look to grow. But also, tip of the cap to the Furman students along the two end zones. Pretty packed out and a great representation about 15 minutes from campus. Mount's got them both. And Furman has tied it up again at 26 all. Brooks trying to go to work, double team coming. Baldwin picked up his dribble. Goes down low and Mount's called for the foul. The yeah, crowd doesn't like it. Mounts is doing a nice job trying to deny the entry pass. And when Brooks was able to get it, he was outside the paint, went away with it once. And that's going to be the Paladin 16 foul. So the next one will be a one and one for Winthrop here. It's the 637 mark. Baldwin gets it in to Falden, the junior out of Richmond, Virginia. And Baldwin comes and gets it right back. Aldrin just lost it off his leg, and no surprise to Dan, who was defending Trey Clark. Hey, hey, hey. Turnover as you take another look. Clark not giving up any space, and try to kind of draw a foul, and dribbled it off his leg. Yeah, Baldwin kind of initiated the contact. Down low to Gurley, reverse with the left hand, and he banks it in. He can go either way. Interesting there, went with the left and looked at quickly. The Eagles trying to come back, but Furman's regained the lead at 28-26. Coming up on six minutes to go. Claxton contact in the basket. That's a tough drive. Gurley backing Burns down, and he drew the foul. Lost control of it and basically batted the ball up toward the rim. That's going to be the second on Burns. He'll have to go to the bench, Dan. It'll be something to watch is, does Gurley try to go to the left hand more with that right hand taped up? The last two possessions doesn't seem to be bothering him as the Furman offense is running through the Paladin sophomore out of Fayetteville, Georgia. He shoots free throws right handed and no adverse effects there. Interesting, he gave that high five to Trey Clark. And here, Trey Clark, give very light touch. Very light touch. Yeah. Down around the palm. Huh. How about that? The bank is open. Early now with seven points. The Paladins back up by 230-28. The Eagles are shooting 61%. Dan, they're four of seven from long range, still find themselves down. Zuna curling off a screen, gets free to the basket, missed. Tip is no good, mounts with the board. Now Furman has numbers as Bothwell pushes. Going right to the rack, little hesitation, and lays it in. Well, you had Clark and Lyons spreading the court. That allowed Bothwell to get there, lay it in. Palin is back up four. 32-28, fall in a tough drive. No, sir. Bothwell the board. More Furman numbers. Watch out for the pull up by Lyons. From way down, 10, yes! Timeout, Winthrop as the Paladins have gone on a 7-0 run to push the lead to 35-28. And did we say watch out for Jordan Lyons? In transition, playing the role of trailer. And there's not enough room in this building to get beyond his range. We'll get another look at it. And you mentioned the, the role of trailer. Furman likes to do this in transition lag behind the play and he said there's not enough room in the building that's two feet from beyond the arc look at the energy you that's, see the pallet and present that are there standing up elizabeth davis that's that's the third three-pointer for jordan lyons in this game he has been struggling shooting the basketball from downtown just under 26 percent on the season you're talking about a guy who is mid to upper 30s for his career but uh, he's had the range here in the first half so far tonight. They had 12 points, and you mentioned that shooting from beyond the arc. And Coach Ritchie Dan told us an interesting thing in the Paladins' last two wins. 
Lions may not have been shooting it great from beyond the arc, but he's doing everything else right, and he's staying with it. And, and Coach said the shots will come back, and tonight may be the night. Three of five from downtown as Lions. Furman is five out of 13 from behind the arc. It's a game of runs. Furman was up six, went down two, and now up seven. Ferguson shot blocked by Gurley. Got it back and threw it away. They said the Paladin's got a hand on did, it. So did stay. Trey Clark get a hand yep. on it? Yes, he did. Active hands. Active hands defensively. And Gurley doesn't seem to have any side effects from that dislocation we saw earlier, Dan. 1-3-1. One, one. Aldrin to Hale with eight on the shot clock. A little bit of a different 1-3-1 one, one look. Not trying to force the trap, but laying that. There's the ball deflected and a shot clock violation. Noah Gurley looking over at Coach Bob Ritchie saying, let's go, a high five from Trey Clark. And how about that? You come out with about 12 seconds on the shot clock, switch to the 1-3-1, one, one, get the shot clock violation. Jaylai, that's you. Critical last four and a half of the half for the Eagles. Got to keep Furman at bay. Early dribbling across the top. Lions. Gets it back from Mounts. Pump fake. Three on the way. Holds the pose and watches it go. And look at Clark on the inbounds. Forces a foul on the Eagles. He got his hand, Dan, on the entry pass. That forced a foul, I believe, on Valdron. Got a lot of purple clad fans on their feet here in downtown Greenville. That's his first. Team number seven. And Clark will go to the line to shoot one and one. And you're going to have a conversation between the officials to make sure that was, in fact, a defensive foul and not an offensive push-off. And there you see the three-pointer. Nice job with the pump fake. Got the defender in the air, knocked it down, and then a turnover on the inbounds. Clark, not a particularly good free-throw shooter for the Palins. Just 8 of 18 from the line on the season. And it equates to 44.4%. Couldn't get the roll. Furman by 10, 38-28. Yeah, thanks to this 10-0 run over the last 98 seconds. It's been quick. Hale into the paint, and Burns just got called for an illegal screen. He nearly decapitated Mike Bothwell. That's going to be the third on Burns. I was kind of surprised he went back in the basketball game, and I don't think the Eagles staff has a choice but to him to sit the last 4 or one of this half. Well, mm -hmm. Furman done a pretty nice job on Burns. Uh, pretty nice, I mean really nice. Scoreless in nine minutes. Michael Anumba checks back in as Burns goes to the bench with those three fouls. Gurley, Lyons, he's going to shoot it anyway and draws the foul. Look, Jordan Lyons with the hand in his face. That's what they're going to do when he catches it. It's made so many, and Lyons will go to the line for three when we come back. Dan and the Paladins in the midst of a 10-0 run. Well, Bob Ritchie wanted energy in this building, and he has seen plenty of it here in the first half. Paladins by 10.
We are coming at you live tonight from Bon Secours Wellness Arena in downtown Greenville. Dan Scott, Bryant Lambert, Furman leading Winthrop 38-28. This is the first of three games that the Furman men's basketball team will play here. The next one, January the 11th against Sanford, is actually a men-women's doubleheader here. The women will play at uh, 4 o'clock, and, and the men will come behind them at 7 o'clock, I believe. And tickets are available at FurmanPaladins.com. Yeah, that's a big conference game against UNC. Gee, Furman, Dan, all time here at the well, as they call it, 4-7. and seven. Haven't played here since 2007 against College of Charleston. The first ever basketball game here, Clemson Tigers, Furman Paladins, was a seven-point ball game. So opened up with a bang of the two teams here in the upstate. Lions with 16 and two more free throws coming. Having a big first half. And that one rolls out his first miss. Yeah, 16 points so far in the opening half. You may be saying, hey, what's, what's his career high? Maybe getting close to well, 54. Yeah. Of course, we all know why. He tied the single game three-point field goals made a season ago against North Greenville. Rattled that one in. He got two out of three. How about Trey Clark? He's been a signed Baldwin, and I think he's frustrated. The redshirt junior guard for the Eagles. Go down low to him on the block. They're trying to use a size advantage. Look at Clark go to work. Got the foul. It's the first foul on Clark, and I believe the seventh on Furman and Baldwin will go to the line to shoot two shots. Yeah, and just a 42% free throw shooter, 11 of 30 coming in as Baldwin on the season. Promptly knocks it down. Is that the announcer's jinx in reverse? Yeah, there you go. That stopped the 12 0 Paladin run as Valdron makes them both. 40 to 30. Under three and a half to go here in the opening 20 minutes. Early at the high post. Now Lions. There you see the screen hedge. Somebody will be open. Bothwell. A little short. And Baldwin the rebound off the deflection. Hale from way out there, too strong. Yeah, right on line, a bit too strong. You mentioned Hale has seen a shot he doesn't like. Trey Clark got his hand done, and he's not going to win any acting jobs for that one. Something to watch when the Paladins have the basketball. If the Eagles continue to hedge that ball screen and really bring that quick double, if Furman can get out of it quick, it's going to lead to open looks outside the perimeter, potentially down on the block. Alex Hunter back in. Hunter just eight minutes so far in this opening half. Quick inbounds, and Jamal King nails the three. Something about a little 5-0 response. Cut the lead to seven. Winthrop. Yeah, nearly a 38% free throw shooter, his first bucket. Clark with the stop. Can't connect. Ferguson the board. Winthrop looking to push tempo. Baldwin double team. And finally a foul call. Clark or Gurley. They got Noah Gurley. Going to be the first personal and Gurley will send Baldwin back to the line for another one and one opportunity. Nice you mentioned Dan, a little spurt by the Eagles. Baldwin can knock both these down. 12 point Furman lead will be down to five. Man, he didn't get either one of them. I want to correct something I said a moment ago in that men's women's doubleheader on the yep. 11th. The women play Sanford, the men play UNC. UNCG. Yep. Hunter mounts. Good ball movement. 13 on the shot clock. Clark trying to back Baldwin down. Now he'll get it outside to Lyons. Lyons looking for separation. Five seconds. And finally, got the whistle on Michael Unamba. His second and team number 10. Yeah, it'll be two shots from Lyons. <laughs> nice patience there. By Lions, the shot clock winding down, didn't settle for that contested three, and he'll get two from the charity stripe. You mentioned the Furman women play at Sanford in that doubleheader. I want to mention Coach Jackie. Carson squad picked to win the Southern Conference. A really good Furman women's team is worth coming out and taking a look at downtown. Lions' first free throw is good. So 
there's a lot of purple in the crowd. Well, Mr. Lyons making sure that purple goes to his, his feet. Yeah, it's more of a pastel color yeah, a purple, too. Purple. Do you have those in your in your closet? Uh, no. No, well, I don't. I don't, well, I don't have anything pastel in my closet. <laughs> Still be Clark I and Valdra. You know, things that are past their prime in my closet, <laughs> but not pastel. 19 for Jordan Lyons. Hale dribbling across the free throw line. Clark way up for the rebound off the miss by Falden. Yeah, Hunter wanted to go quick. Watch the trail. Furman by nine. 42-33, Gurley on the baseline. Double team comes. He goes up with the left hand and scores. Yeah, that was a mismatch. Nice little hook double hand shot. 42-33, Paladin, or 44-33, an 11-point advantage as we first minute to go. Nine points for Gurley. Clark tying Baldwin up. And that'll be a jump ball altered to possession. It'll stay with Winthrop. We talked about Clark frustrating Baldwin. I think we see it again there all up in the grill of the larger guard for the Eagles. He'll go to the bench and take a seat. He's been playing hard, but it's tough, Dan, to get in a rhythm when you're facing that kind of intense defense and Clark's picking him up the whole court. Well, Trey Clark played as a true freshman and then a redshirt year. And then two years ago in his redshirt sophomore season, he embraced the role of defensive stopper and has just been phenomenal in that role. Here's a misfire off the inbound. Ball loose on the floor. It'll be Furman ball. Yeah, I believe they're gonna say the Eagles. That was Claxton, the freshman out of Greenville along the baseline while he touched it. So Furman will get it with 105 remaining in the half. An 11 point lead, the largest of the game has been 12 for the Paladins late in this first half. Gurley, backing down on Ferguson, finds Lyons. Lyons will penetrate, spin, through the contact, and back to the line. Well, the double team help was coming when Lyons got to the paint. Mount was wide open in the corner, and the help had to go get on Clay Mount, and that allowed Lyons to get the shot off, and now he'll be fouled to go to the line for two. Maybe a little offensive, defensive sub here late in the half. Clark back at the table will check in next possession. Furman still has the use it or lose it timeout. Take another look though. You see the double team. They're trying to get to the corner, I believe, rather was Zunick. Hunter Helen turned his back and Lions jumped into him, got the foul call. And he continues to shoot well from the line. Six out of seven. Slauson out as Clark checks back in. Four points for Slauson in 10 minutes, but his energy's been great tonight. He's been very, very active defensively, had two big offensive boards to keep it alive early in this first half. Lions gets them both. Mike Bothwell in, Hunter out. 44 seconds remaining, and Furman's largest lead of the game, 46-33. Furman doesn't get a stop if they use their use it or lose it timeout. Ferguson takes Gurley into the paint. Right-handed hook, left it short. And they're not going to call the timeout. They're just going to hold it for the final shot. The shot clock turned off. Largest lead of this first half for the Paladins. A chance to extend it. Crowd comes to their feet in appreciation of what they've seen. Nine seconds. Bothwell with six. He'll drive to the basket. Contact, no call. Out of bounds, Furman's ball with two and a half seconds. We'll see if Furman wants to use that timeout here. They, they will, will use it now. So this is interesting. The Paladins, Dan, have a couple options. You have the size of Gurley and Mounts to go to the rim, or you have plenty of shooters if you want to try to get behind the arc. Jordan Lyons with 21 points in this first half, and here's part of the reason why. Well, he's five of seven from the field, four of six from beyond the arc in 16 minutes. And then his, his confidence grew because he got a little bit in the lane early on. And then he had a four point play. He was fouled on another three point. He's really done it all. And look at the, the senior bring the energy. 
What do you do here if you're Coach Richie? You try to get something going to the rim? Uh, I think that would be his preference. We have seen in the past something dialed up maybe for a lob to clay mounts here. I would be surprised if Winthrop gives up anything inside, but we'll see. It'll be Bothwell to trigger it in. Two and a half seconds. They lob it to Mounts, feed it to Clark, missed it, and then Gurley couldn't flush it at the buzzer. Oh, boy, they designed that well. They got the shot in the lane, but could not convert. A wildly entertaining first half of basketball. Furman on top, 46-33. Furman with a 13-point lead at the half, 46-33 over Winthrop. Coming up here at halftime, we will have scores, we'll have stats and highlights, and we'll, of course, welcome you to Furman. All that is dead ahead on halftime. Furman by 13 at the break.
Hey class of 2023, welcome to Furman University. I'm Jesse Tompkins, your student body president. Today is a special day as your life as a Furman student begins, and in a moment, you'll get a glimpse of what that looks like. First, I wanted to congratulate you on choosing Furman as your home, not only while you're here for the next four years, but even when you leave as alumni. Today, you're joining a family of 2,800 students and over 30,000 alumni who also call Furman home. You'll meet amazing friends, professors, and mentors who are committed to your success. You'll be challenged and inspired, and you will learn more than the academic curriculum. Take advantage of all the opportunities you have here. Get involved and explore your passions. If you do, I know that your Furman experience will be everything you hope it will be. Welcome home. With the heart of darkness, going to blows with your fear and gone. Never going to the strip away. The thought of you has gotta die to change. In the morning, you gonna need an answer. Ain't nobody gonna change the standard. It's not enough to just feel the flame. You gotta burn your old self away. Hold on tight.
Furman by 13 at the half, 46-33. Both teams back out ahead of the uh, second half buzzer. Dan Scott and Bryant Lambert. A few highlights here as we go back and forth. Yeah, Noah Gurley there had nine points in the first half. Furman got it going early. Both teams were shooting it well early. Hale didn't see a bad shot for the first 15 minutes, Dan, and then uh, things kind of changed. Winthrop went on a big run, and then the Palins responded the last five minutes. Yeah, Win Winthrop had an eight-nothing run. Furman responded with a 10-0 run. How about that? Trey Clark showing off his leaping ability there. Early on, both teams were similar in turnovers. Winthrop ended up with 12 first half turnovers, Dan, that led to 15 firm and points. Some of those points were long run for the Lions.
team third here in the half. Curling mounts, gets it, lays it in. That's a big time control move by Clay Mouth. Put him in double digits now with 10 and the largest lead grows to 16. Nice feed from Lions too. Crowd wanted a carry, the official saying they kept the hand on top of the ball. That could have been a walk. Well, as it was, he ended up, King did, sitting down out of bounds with the basketball in his possession, so he turned it over anyway. Eagles now with 15 turnovers that have led to 16 Furman points. And Furman was not doing great early capitalizing off the turnovers. I've been much more productive off those Eagles. And over there, we're gonna see some full court pressure again. We're gonna see if Winthrop maybe tries to force some steals or if it's just gonna be more that passive pressure to slow down the pallet and attack. It's just gonna be Hale working one on one against Hunter. They had Clark flying to the basket, Hunter missed him. He didn't miss it that time! Wow! Don't worry about a layup when he can jam at home. The second thunderous jam for the junior out of Florida. 55-37, 18-point lead. And Noah Gurley just picked up his second personal foul on the other end. Watch this feed from Hunter and the flush by Trey Clark. 55-37, Paladins. Trey Clark can fly. Hello. Furman by 18 here at Bon Secours Wellness Arena downtown. When this program began playing in 1908, its home was downtown. And for a good portion of that time, it was Greenville Memorial Auditorium. You take a look at some of the photos from action there in bygone years, fans clamoring to get in. A lot of good memories down in the auditorium. You mentioned all those fans looking to get in. When we moved to the arena, the SOCON tournament here was held at the time, the Bilo Center. Over 10,000 fans watched Furman and App State in the semifinal SOCON game down there. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, a foul on Furman. I think they got Mike Bothwell. Prior to Memorial Auditorium, Furman played at the Textile Hall. That's where Frank Selby scored his 100 points against Newberry in the mid-50s. Mounts with the rebound. There goes my trivia question for you. you. You answered it before I could ask. Textile Hall, if you're familiar with downtown Greenville at all, is was over just off of Washington Street near where St. Mary's Catholic Church is now. Gurley with the miss. And the other trivia uh, note about that, it was the first live sporting event ever televised in the state of South Carolina. There you go. Zunick will try the three. No. Offensive rebound by Valdron. 
All the way across court to King. He launches from deep and got it. Third time to charm. King now two of two from long range. Big possession there for Winthrop, but I believe it's going to be a quick timeout. Yeah, Pat Kelsey is going to call a timeout here. It's a 15-point Furman lead. That's a first called timeout, and we'll take the break with them. So maybe trying to set up something in the full court. We'll find out when we come back. But the Paladins leading it 55 to 40. Back to the arena in a moment. Speaking of Frank Selby's 100-point game at the Textile Hall against Newberry, here are some highlights from that game. Yeah, notice and, what's not there is a three-pointer. Uh, yes, there was no three-point shot in those days. Frank Selby scoring at will. What you didn't see there, his 99th and 100th points from half court. It's a little-known fact, a half court shot late. And you'll see, when one person scores 100, I bet the team scores 149. Yep. Dan, you mentioned it right going to the break. Great call. Time out there. You said, are we going to see some full court pressure? We're going to see a whole different style. He'll try to force some turnovers for the Paladins. Furman gets it in. Alex Hunter weaving his way through traffic, and now Furman with numbers. Slauson, baseline. Look out. When you beat the pressure, you're going to have a numbers advantage. Furman capitalizing the lead at 17 on Jalen Slauson's two-handed jam. Not sure that's the way Pat Kelsey drew it up in the timeout. They answer, though, with Claxton flushing one home. He's had a nice night now, 11 points for the freshman from right here in Greenville. Hunter finds mounts. Bothwell. Mounts open in the corner. His three, too strong. Rebound, loose. King cleared it, got it to Valdron. Valdron going at Bothwell, and there's Clark with the block from behind. But they called a foul on Bothwell. Crowd doesn't like it. They said his elbow going up. Claxton now has a new career high with his 11 points. His previous career high was nine. That was in Cameron Indoor Stadium against the Duke Blue Devils. Take another look. Valdron on the spin, and I don't see that. Tough call there for the Paladins. I think that was a little bit of an anticipation call. Yeah, it's definitely tough when you had Trey Clark coming on that block from behind. Baldwin right, hit the first one. He'll get one more. Four team fouls for the Paladins here in the second half. Baldwin one out of two. Yeah, the lacrosse team, Paladin student section there behind the goal celebrating that mess. 57-43, Furman. Mounts will drive. Mounts, yeah, couldn't get the roll, but he'll go to the line. I like 
play mounts, not settling for the mid-range shot there. Attacks the glass, and he knows when to pull up, when to do the floater, when to attack the rim. He's a dynamic player, a redshirt junior for Coach Bob Ritchie. Michael Anumba with his fourth foul. So you've got Anumba with four, you've got Burns with four. <laughs> no Paladin, Dan, with more than two. Take another look at Mounts. He caught it at the top of the key. Didn't settle. And then flies down the right. Doesn't quite finish through contact, but is at the line to try to make the second of two. You got them both. Furman as a team now, 17 of 21 from the line. 16 point Paladin lead. And back to that 1 3 1 zone that we saw briefly in the first half. And a kick ball. When Gurley's in the game, normally he's at the top of the zone. Here you're going to have Trey Clark, a very similar, not quite as long, but active. And that's one of the most key positions is the top, but also what Alex Hunter has to play. He's got to follow the ball like a linebacker, follows a quarterback in the pocket, make sure no one gets it beyond their arm. Baldwin directing traffic. Seven on the shot clock. Clark got a hand on it. Four to shoot. No look pass. Blocked by Mounts. Zunick thought he had a gimme. Mounts said no, sir. Hunter thought about launching, but he'll back it out and set the offense. Yeah, smart play. 16 point lead. Run the offense, get a better look. Mounts in the corner. Baseline, forces his way to the basket and scores. That's a better look. Clark almost steals the inbounds again. Vaughn's going quickly. 14 for Clay Mounts. Furman up by 18 again, 61-43. Matching its largest lead of the game. And look, Furman back in the man-to-man, -man, so not letting the Eagles get comfortable against that zone. Baldwin backing Bothwell down. Bothwell refusing to give ground. Forced a bad shot. And here comes Hunter. Bothwell, now he'll take one at Baldwin and get called for the foul. Third foul on Bothwell. Lowered the shoulder maybe a bit there. I don't know. We'll have to take another look. But let's go back to the, the last possession, the defense Bothwell had. On patience, stayed low, didn't foul, and he'll check out after picking up that personal on the charge. Team foul number five, you've got Gurley and Lions checking back in. Rebounds, 27-24, three-point rebounding advantage for the Paladins. Under 12 timeout, next whistle. Ferguson kept his dribble alive. Zunick passed up an open three, Hale won't, got it. Right on cue, Hale now has 11. The Paladin's got to find him. He's shot nine times from long range, has made three of them, and back to a 15-point Paladin lead. He had eight points in a hurry early in this game, and we hadn't heard from him in a while. Clark down inside to Gurley, spins left hand, left it short. Rebound kicked all the way back out. Again, new rule this year, offensive rebound, shot clock just back to 20. Gurley gets it back, he'll go up with the right hand and score. Hold him down once, can't hold him down twice. Noah Gurley now in double figures as well, one of three Paladins. 63-46 Furman, coming down toward the 11 minute mark. Hale driving, contact and scores. And now Hale with 13. Tell you what, this has not been a game for the meek inside. There have been a lot of drives and a lot of contact. Hale's career high is 15. That was at Hartford earlier this year. Hunter dials one up from downtown. The seventh from long range, and the Paladin lead is back to 18, ties their largest. Ten and a half to go. Hale with that left-handed drive, under mounts, misfire, Gurley the rebound. Watch out, Lions in the far corner. Eagles do a nice job of finding them. Hunter looking to Bob Ritchie as Ritchie tells him what he wants him to do. Clark 
down low to Gurley and threw it out of bounds. That'll get us to a median timeout. Furman doing it inside and outside here in this second half. And they lead it by 18, 66 to 48. Furman will play two more games. The men will here uh, at Bon Secours Wellness Arena. Weekends at the well. The next one is January the 11th, and that is the men's women's doubleheader. The women will play Samford in the first game. The men against UNCG in game two. And then in February, Furman and Wofford will close out this experiment that I believe is going to become more of a it's going to be a thing. It's going to be a thing, exactly. Tickets on uh, on sale at FurmanPaladins.com. Yeah, that Paladin game against Wofford. The first time those two teams meet will be a Friday night over in Spartanburg. That game's on ESPNU. So two special matchups between the Terriers this year. Down low to Burns, who is back in the game with four fouls and gets his first basket of the game. Young man averaging 11 and a half. It'll be critical for Burns to stay in without fouling, obviously. We'll see if Furman wants to go right at him with Gurley. 66-50. Gurley, he'll shoot the three over top of him, in and out. And now Hale trying to push tempo. Boy, and Numba. Looked like he took three little bitty steps. Burns just trying to do too much with the ball. Lions knows what to do with it, but can't stop it, connect stop it, from out there. Yeah, Furman needs to stop the basketball. Valdron looking to go quick. Nice job by Hunter to slow him down. Hell from way downtown. Missed everything. He could be a great shooter from that far, that early in the shot clock. Your team trailing by 16. I'm not that sure that's the shot. He just, looked, wants to take. he just looked towards the bench and made the sign like it was ball was tipped and nobody bought it. I don't know how it could be tipped when I don't think anybody was in about two feet of them. <laughs> they weren't in the same area code. <laughs> They're over at Timmons Arena playing defense. <laughs> Again, Furman's going to have to handle this pressure well. So far, so good. The Paladin has turned the ball over just eight times, but the Eagles going to show some real full court pressure here. Furman handled it very well on the road at the Auburn Tigers. It was an interesting philosophy where Coach Richie had Alex Hunter inbound the ball, then get it right back. It worked pretty well. Mounts with the hesitation, flies to the basket, scores with the left hand, and Burns is just fouled out. Burns is out of the basketball game, Dan. 12 minutes, two points, two rebounds, one assist. A big time defensive performance by the Pounds on Burns. Take another look, Mount stayed with it, no question about it, and he'll go to the line for one. It's not a whole lot of contact there, but Mount's able to elevate and use the offhand to score. You saw what Furman did when Burns got the basketball. They immediately brought the double team with Hunter 
if he would have been able to get the ball out, it's going to lead to some open looks. But now with him out of the basketball game, Furman may not have to double the post at all. Mounts his second miss. He'd hit five in a row. And there's a foul on Jalen Pugh. That will send Chase Claxton to the line. Claxton trying to extend that career high. Going to the line once tonight, knocked it down on the season. Claxton, just a 51% free throw shooter, 15 of 29. He is now two for two tonight. Furman now, 22 free throws attempted the Eagles. This will be their eighth and ninth. I think that shows Dan a more aggressive Furman team trying to get it down low, get points in the paint. Points in the paint, 20-20 in favor of Coach Bob Ritchie's squad. That one rolls off, mounts with the rebound. Lions leads all scores with 22, had 21 in the first half. Mounts with 16, Gurley 11 for the Paladins. Hale with 13, Claxton 12 for the Eagles. Gurley with the spin, the left hand and scores again. And a nice job on the entry pass. They're at a nine at front. We went over the top, the easy lane. Vision, vision. 70 to 51, 19 point Paladin lead. I think it went off Alex Hunter's foot on the pass from Hale. Baldwin checked back in for the Eagles. If Winthrop's gonna put some pressure on the Paladin as they gotta get hot from long range. I've shot the ball pretty well from long range, seven of 19 as of the Paladins. But you mentioned it, it was Hale early on that were knocking those down. Firm is locked down beyond the perimeter since. Alex, stop on the tape. A 19 point lead, by the way, is the largest for Furman in this game. Zunick finds Ferguson deep in the corner. Had to put a little extra air on that shot to get it over Mounts and then the put back. Anumba with his first basket. I think the eighth and ninth offensive rebounds there for the Eagles, but. The name of the game right now for Winthrop is stops. They're going to get back in it. They got to stop the pounds. It's like Gurley might have twisted an ankle. Not slowing him down. He went right by Ferguson. And Ferguson going to be called for the hand check. Third foul on Josh Ferguson. Foul number six for the team. And we've reached the under eight media timeout. Watch Noah Gurley go to work. Furman up by 17. Well, the Furman dance team getting in the Christmas mood. At the end of this little number, they did a full-on split. I have credit to those gals. I could not think about doing a split like we just saw there. A little rock head action. Ooh, Nicely done. Talk about the holiday spirit is all the way around. Mitchell Furman will play one more time before the Christmas holidays. It's that opening Southern Conference matchup you talked about on the road against the Mercer Bears, watch out. Lob it into Gurley and just never came down, just caught it in the air, soft touch, got the roll. Yeah, 15 points for Gurley, six of 12 shooting, and the Paladins have made five of their last seven for the field to push to this largest lead of the game at 19. Good, 
Taken away by Mounts. Chance to push the lead beyond 20. Gurley for three, no. Slauson kept it alive. Lions from downtown, nope. Here's Mounts. And Mounts with another opportunity. Yeah, Coach Richie's gonna slow things down, set up something here. As the Paladins on the offensive glass productive this evening, 11-0 boards within eight second chance points. Hunter had his shot swatted. Falden taking it up the floor for Winthrop. He'll turn, shoot over Hunter and score. A little coast to coast action for Charles Falden. Falden now has seven. Nice job going high off the glass. The lead for Furman's at 17. Credit the Eagles, staying with it, playing tough. Well, this is a basketball team that went out the West Coast and knocked off top 20 St. Mary's. Furman, Dan, lost in overtime by three at Auburn. Had a two point lead late, couldn't quite hold on. Lions with the stop, the spin. In and out, no. Slauson the tip, no. Ferguson the rebound. 72-55, Ferguson trying to draw him closer and he does. Ferguson now with 11, he's in double digits. 33% on the year from long range and just like that, down to 14, still plenty of time. 555 for Winthrop. Five fifty clock running. Down low to Gurley and Claxton comes over the top, knock it away with nine on the shot clock. And a hockey line change in this hockey arena for Winthrop. Four new players check in. Anumba, Claxton, Fald, and Ferguson all head to the bench. Trey Clark in for the Paladins. Mounts working against Baldrin, elbow jumper, no. Furman has gone cold here of late. Oh, for their last five. Hale pushing it. Little Euro step got free and scored, and the lead is down to 12 at 72 60. Yeah, the Eagles have made their last four. As you mentioned, Furman missing the last five. Crowd trying to get behind the Paladins in this 12 point game. And Valdron took it away. Boy, how many steps did he take and got away with it? 10 point game. Furman wants a timeout. It's 5.05 to go. A 30 second timeout called by Furman. Well, Bob Ritchie's seen a 19 point lead whittled down to 10. Talked about the St. Mary's win for. Winthrop earlier this season. Of course, the Paladins last year with the big wins over Loyola Chicago and Villanova, the defending national champs. That went up at Villanova. It was Furman that missed a late free throw that you're thinking, oh, there was the Paladins chance going to overtime and they just, they beat Villanova in overtime. One of the best fadeaway floaters on the baseline I've ever seen live was Matt Rafferty and he helped the Paladins in that program defining win. They're gonna have to buckle down in this 10 point game. Furman was tested against USC Upstate. They let a lead slip down to one and they dominated the last two minutes in that game, but still more than that here, 5.05 remaining. Winthrop gonna put the full court pressure back on. Clay Mounts gets it into Gurley to Hunter. Let's see if the Paladins don't wanna try to get something toward the rim here. Maybe Gurley on the block or Mounts going to the basket. And how quickly can Team score these days. That 9 0 run, a minute 43 is all it took for Winthrop to cut that 19 point lead to 10. Hunter from straight away. Yes. Big Boy, shot. you need a big basket, and Alex Hunter delivers. Give the assist to Clay Mounts and a big fist pump on the way back down the court. Eight points for Hunter all in this second half. Hale, Zunick, right back to Hale. And a foul on the floor ahead of the shot. It's going to be the Paladins' seventh foul, Dan, in the second half. So a one and one at the line for the Eagles. Chance to cut into this 13-point deficit with the clock stop. And it will be Hale shooting that one and one. Third foul on Hunter. Look at the stat shoots, right? This is going to be Hale's first free throw attempt of the season. 
and rolls it in. Well, when you're launching the majority of yeah. your shots 26 feet from the basket, you're not going to get fouled very often. And I'm not, I, and I'm, I'm not saying that in a sarcastic yeah. way. He, he, yeah. he has hit some shots from out there tonight. Gets both free throws. He's got 17 now. The Eagles with 16 fouls in this half, so be a one and one if the Paladins are fouled non-shooting. Numbers. Yep, Hunter finds Lions, 4-3, got it. Well, that's just a killer, absolute killer. The second time Furman's beaten the pressure, one time all the way, there, three, long shot. Gurley the rebound. And that's the second three from long range. Hale's taking that. I just don't think the shot Coach Kelsey wants him to take. Coming up on the four minute mark. Lions dribble drive. The floater. No. Gurley missed time to jump on the rebound. Zunick pushing it up the floor for the Eagles. Claxton nearly had it taken away from behind. Here's Hale. Squaring up, right spinning. Right right Good defense by Lions, forces the ball all the way back out. 12 to shoot. Deep three, no, Gurley with the rebound. Yeah, Coach Ritchie's gonna say get across half court, slow things down, 13 point lead, 320 to go. 77-64. You know, this Winthrop team, a lot of fight under Coach Kelsey. They're going to go to the buzzer. Lions again from deep. He'll go to the line for three. He's already completed one four-point play tonight. Almost had a chance for another one. Final media timeout. Furman up by 13, 77, 264. But during the timeout, they came over to the monitor and looked to see if Jordan Lyons had a foot on the line on that shot. He did, so he'll be shooting two free throws and not three. Uh, Jerome Hall laughing. There's a lot of lines out there if you look. Yes, there are. To take a look three at different three-point yeah. lines. And all different colors. Here's the one that he had knocked down, and that was the big one after Furman had beaten the full court pressure. Jordan Lyons will shoot two shots. Furman has a team now 18 of 23 from the charity strike. Lyons with 25 points. Lions only has one field goal in this second half after a 21-point first half. Now he, did, did he not just come over and tell us that? He, he said two, and then he laughed and said, 
th I couldn't tell if he was joking with us or not, but it, apparently it is going to be three shots for Lyon. I'm, I'm just as confused because we had a kind of a lengthy hey, exchange. Jerome right? came yeah. over here and told us that it yeah. was a two. 79-64. Yeah. Baseline drive by Valdron, count it, and a foul. That's going to be on Trey Clark, and I think the last thing Coach Ritchie wants is his team giving the Eagles a chance to cut into this with the clock shot. Valdron hanging in there, now has nine points, a chance to make it ten. Trey Clark done a phenomenal job on Valdron tonight. So when you look at the impact players, Brooks, Valdron, I mentioned Brook, <coughs> Burns rather fouled out, 11 minutes, two points. He's going to get one sh one more shot. That is Jason Donnelly. You see on the screen there, Furman's athletic director. This weekend at the well was his idea. And he assembled his team some three months ago and said, let's make it happen. And I think so far so good. This first night of three in this season has been, I think, an unqualified success. Great crowd, great energy and said kind of, why do you want to delay offensive foul early? Why delay it next year? Try to do it this year. As Coach Ritchie does not like this call. Noah Gurley got called for an offensive foul. That was a little bit of a flop. There was some contact there, but not enough to send Claxon flying that far. Yeah, Coach Ritchie's But you know what? Up. Good for Claxon. Yeah, of course, there's that new rule this year. If you flop, you get caught with it. It's the warning, and then it goes to those technical fouls. But it gives the Eagles a chance to cut this to a single-digit game if they can hit one from long range. 79-67. Oh, legal! Back door. Claxon misses. Got it back and put it in. Yeah, 10-point game, 79-69. Clock at 220. And again, the Eagles have cut it to 10. It's a 19-point lead. They got it down to 10, and then Furman ran it back up to... 15, but now back down to 10 again. Mounts. Blocking foul, and Clay Mounts will go to the line. 2.03 to go. Yeah, the eighth eagle foul, so one and one for Clay Mounts. Tries to expand on his 16 point performance tonight, five of seven from the line. Michael Anumba becomes the second member of the Eagles to foul out. Yeah, look, Pat Kelsey's going to say, hey, let's use this as a little bit of a free timeout. You get that, what, 15, 20 seconds to sub, going to huddle this team up. Used to be a full 60, but they cut that time down, and you can see already Ryan Christian trying to break up that huddle. Well, you got to hit free throws down the stretch in big games to win them. Clay Mounts has been good from the line so far. Yeah, big one and one here. He'll get the second one. Look at your firm in here. You know Wentham's gonna wanna go quick, stop the ball. You might look at switching all screens to not give up that three-point look. We'll see. Missed that one. King with the rebound, or uh, and now Dan, how about that? Baldwin with the rebound. Back to the one-three-one. I think Eagles got away with a walk. Deep three, no. Offensive board. Hale will try, and what he do? He travels. Yeah, that could have. We'll take another look. Might have been a makeup call there, unless Hall called it, then shuffled his feet. And Baldwin said, "Hey, put it down." I don't think Hall dribbled. Pat Kelsey didn't like it, and neither did the win for radio crew behind him. As you can see from that shot. They're looking across the way here, sitting a few seats down from Jason Donnelly is Jeff Beans and his family. He was part of that freshman class a few years back that really turned the fortunes of this program. Remember what he did as a freshman in the Southern Conference Tournament? Oh, yeah. Great My basketball player, better person. As Jeff Dean. His state in Greenville is working here now. Turnover. 80 to 69. Furman by 11. Falden to the basket. Left handed scores and they got it inside. Single digits now. 
Going to be a 30-second timeout. Allows the Eagles to set up this full-court pressure. 80-71 if you're the Paladins. Be strong with the basketball expected. And look, if you got an open look after you beat it, make sure it's wide open or else use some clock. That class, Jeff Beams, John Davis III, Devin Sibley, and the guy on the coaching staff here, Daniel Fowler, had so much to do with turning this around. Here's your weekends at the well. Dates. January, this should be flip-flopped. UNCG's on January the 11th. Wofford on February the 22nd. And again, tickets are available at FermanPaladins.com. Yeah, both those games are going to have SoCon championship impacts, I think. And don't forget, the women will play the first game on January the 11th against Samford, an afternoon affair. I think anybody that's come down to this game that maybe doesn't get out to Timmins Arena on a regular basis sees a Paladin squad that's fun and exciting, and there's Lions wisely pulls it out there when it had a contested look. I think Gurley wanted a lob, but Lions wouldn't give it to him. Well, Dan, do you agree for the Eagles playing straight up here? No foul? That's a three-possession game. I think after this possession, you're probably going to have to foul. Five seconds to shoot it. Lions slicing, misses. Now with him falling, it's five on four for Winther. Helm gives it up to Valdron. Valdron gets it back. He'll drive on Bothwell. Kick it out. Falden for three straight away. No. Way up high was Alex Hunter struggling for the basketball. It's tied up. It'll stay Winthrop ball. On the alternate possession, 31.7 seconds to go. Let's go on the Paladins way there. Is that possession so far has taken about 20 seconds. So although the alternating arrow keeps it with the Eagles, Furman able to milk some precious time off the clock with this nine point advantage. Still the nine point lead, Dan. Powell's without a field goal the last 350. Now some discussion between officials Jerome Hall and Ryan Christian. And now ready to trigger it in. Ferguson right back to hell. His three in and out, no good. And he, and he tried to draw the foul on that kickback. He'll shot, uh, shoot it again, left that one short. And the rebound, Baldwin knocks it off Hunter with 20.3 seconds to go. So they're getting multiple chances, but they're not connecting and just continues to run clock. Yeah, take another look at the replay. Another missed three, but a nice job by Valdrin. What he did is he jumped, caught it. Before he landed, he throws it off Alex Hunter. And Coach Ritchie's going to maybe get a little size in there to try to help the rebounding over those last 20 seconds. Furman, Slauson and Clark check in. One point led the rebounding in the second half by three. The Eagles now out-rebounding Furman 40-35. to 35. Ferguson from deep, short. Another put back this time by Falden. Furman just not rebounding. It's a seven point game with 15.7 seconds to go. And yeah, now you see Lyons and Bothell check back in for ball handling a little offensive or defense. And last time out there by the Eagles, the full time out. And then right now you got up 19, you're now up seven. You're playing tough without hitting a field goal this last four or seven, but credit coach Pat Kelsey's squad staying in the fight. They may run out of time just a bit, but I think this is a team that's going to go really well in the Big South. No uh, surprise. Furman is going to have to hit some free throws in this final 15.7 seconds to put this one away, but barring a collapse of near biblical proportions here, should get their 10th win in the non-conference to close out the non-conference portion of the schedule at 10-3. Yep. And, and, and you go back to, we mentioned Mercer and then VMI, two road games. The Paladins look to win to start 2-0 in the league through, through the year. Overall, we talked about Jason Donnelly, the athletic director, the job he's done to get this downtown in really a short period of time. Overall, I think the atmosphere, fans into the game, Furman had the runs. It felt a little Timmins Arena-ish. I think it will grow over time as you get even more and more into these downtown games, a chance to get maybe expanded big time opponents. But uh, look, if you don't have your tickets for the last two here, I know we say it a lot, it's, it's well worth it to come check it out. Uh, but it, it's fun basketball. Furman opened up this arena with the, with the basketball game, uh, first ever. Uh, and they're now gonna probably be the last team to play at the moment with a win. Hunter to trigger it in. 
Gets it in the Lions. Double team comes. And Lions called timeout. Furman will 13. have 13.2. One, one remaining after this. So you had Alexander inbounding it. What I was talking about the game, Dan at Auburn. Hunter inbounded. As soon as the, the, the Paladin caught it, Hunter established himself and got the ball right back. Yep. And what talking to Coach Richie, Hunter didn't have to spend all night working to get open and was able to save him a little bit. Well, interesting to see if we go back to it here, if the Paladin is inbound to go right back to Alex Hunter. Well, except in this case, I think you probably want Jordan Lyons at the free throw line to get the ball in his hands. So, but we'll see. The Eagles have 18 fouls, so one more one and one. Play it out if Furman misses that front of the one and one, a quick three, maybe it's a four point game, seven, eight type seconds. So stranger things have happened if you're the Paladin as you want to be strong with the basketball. How about this tonight for Furman? Shot 36% from long range, eight of 22. The Eagles have shot eight of 28 points in the paint, favoring the Eagles 34-32. Overall, stats are, are pretty balanced, but Furman was able to build that lead, really the defensive end in the second half. Mounts gets it in the Lions. Lions double team. Bothwell, Mounts, and that'll do it. Six seconds, and Hale will foul with five seconds. And Furman is going to put this one away. Yeah, home crowd starting to sense it as they rise to their feet. 5.1 remaining, 1-1. One one. Jerome Hall talking Pat Kelsey. I think, I don't know if he wanted an earlier foul called on his own team. Still trying to get an explanation. Oops. This is Alex Hunter yeah. at the line. Went the next time out, they'll be hosting Southern Illinois, Edwardsville, and then Elon. Final two seconds, Valdrum will launch. He will miss, and that will do it. Paladins win it 80 to 73 in the first of these weekend at the well matchups here in this 2019-2020 college basketball season. A tough, tough matchup and uh, Impressive win. Yeah, special night for this Furman program coming back downtown. A win over a very, very solid Winthrop squad. Furman, I think you'll hear from Coach Ritchie, really pleased as we built the 19, the Palins built that 19-point lead. Uh, maybe some slight hiccups, but overall, uh, a big-time win for the Palins. I think you'll get a happy Coach Ritchie, Dan, and they finished non-conference play with 10 wins. If you would have said 10-3 and three at the beginning of non-conference, I think Coach Ritchie would have taken it. How about you see there, Coach Ritchie and Athletic Director Jason Donnelly sharing a moment. I think they want to thank this home crowd. Yeah, they, they are meeting at mid-court right now, players, coaches, and if I'm not mistaken, I think they may be about to present a game ball to Jason Donnelly. This is a little bit of an unplanned sequence, I think, yep. as, as the ropes come up. And well, no, Jason's on the outside of the huddle. Don't know exactly what's going on, but Bob Ritchie wanting to address his team at mid. And I think he, he may be going, they have Sharpies. They may be going up in the crowd to sign some potential autographs or interact with the fans. So one of the big things about coming downtown is to expand the fan base, expand the brand of Furman University, Furman basketball. And this might be a nice move by the team really to, to have another reach out opportunity. Yeah, in fact, you are right. There's going to be an autograph uh, opportunity here. And looking for Bob Ritchie to come over and join us here courtside as Furman wins it 80 to 73. I caught myself though, I didn't completely bust. <laughs> well, when things are going your way, they go your way, right? Yeah, I kept my balance. I kept my balance. Hopefully we can get that on camera, huh? Well, maybe maybe for the blooper reel later. Congratulations on the win. Yeah, it was, you know what, man, what, what a, an awesome environment. How about this? The things that people have said that Furman basketball can't do, right? And just add another one to the list. Nobody ever thought we could do this, right. okay? It's gonna get bigger. Our administration, Jason's been phenomenal. Our whole student body showed up tonight. Athletes, Greenville, this was fun. And uh, man, we fed off the energy. We got a big lead and uh, you know, they did some things late. They were obviously playing free and uh, they started making some shots and we struggled to, to finish on the boards, but 
proud of what we did in that 40 to be able to extend the lead like that and play with that type of margin. You, you said in the radio pregame when you and I talked that you know, you, you've got a, a, a really good home court now at, at uh, Timmons Arena, a lot of energy there. But you know what? We can come down here and create some energy too, and you did. There were some points tonight that this place got really loud. Yeah, this is home, you know, and, that, and that's what we want everybody to understand. This is home. And this is this is downtown Greenville. This is this is Furman and um, this is us. And so, you know, the energy in this place, you look at these people coming around to see our players right now. And, um, you know, this is just another step in the right direction of us building the program that we want to have here. And uh, we want to be Greenville's team. And I think tonight, I think everybody walking out of here, they saw a team that played hard. They saw a team that played connected. And uh, they saw a team that really helped each other. And uh, that was a fun night. I saw a team that also played through a, a, a tough battle. There was a lot of contact in this game. Noah Gurley gets a finger dislocated. I mean, this was not a game for the meek if you were going to go into the paint. No, this was a war, and uh, you could feel that early. You know, both teams were making shots on the perimeter, and, uh, you know, both teams were driving the ball and making plays off the bounce, and, you know, the physicality of this game was, was immense. And I'm going to tell you something, Trey Clark, Trey Clark was a huge, huge difference maker tonight. And, um, you know, especially in the first half, his first half defense and the dunk he got, uh, he just continues to be a huge, a huge piece for us. Everybody w took a big part tonight. I thought Alex Hunter led our group. I thought that obviously Jordan Lyons, we knew, I, I kept, everybody keeps asking me, you know, man, you worried about it? No, I'm not. I'm not worried about a shot at all. And we saw tonight, he, he's going to be just fine. All right, Bob, we'll let you go and we'll talk to you on the radio. All right, thank you. Congratulations. That is Bob Ritchie and uh, his Paladins with a seven-point win here tonight over the Winthrop Eagles. Ten and three on the season now, and Winthrop falls to four and seven. Take a look at some of the game action as we say goodbye for you tonight. For Bryant Lambert, I'm Dan Scott saying so long from Bon Secours Wellness Arena where the final score again, it was Furman 80 and Winthrop 73. Remember, fans, all games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This game has been a presentation of ESPN. For Bryant Lambert, I'm Dan Scott. So long, everybody.